Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Firefighters Podcast, where we seek to develop, inspire, and motivate the world of the emergency services operator through a series of wide-ranging conversations. Now, before we go any further, just hit that rate, follow, or subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening to. It's a key performance indicator for us and helps us reach even more people. Now, here's what we've got for you today. Hey folks, welcome back to the podcast and a bonus episode. We've just come back from the Welsh Firefighter Challenge. This was held on the 1st and 2nd of June, and this year it took place in Swansea. If you're not aware of it, the Welsh Firefighter Challenge is a regional sporting event, and it's ran alongside the British Firefighter Challenge. It's for both serving and retired firefighters. The aims of the event are to raise much-needed funds, both for firefighters' charity and also to raise awareness for the communities in which we serve. The first event was in 2022, so this is the third time they have ran it, and it is just getting better, and it was really, really well attended we have over 120 athletes from 27 different fire and rescue services including 32 that's nearly a quarter of the attending athletes were females when we talk about involving all the firefighter community in these types of events it's truly incredible to see organizations like the welsh and the british and the cheshire fire challenge leading from the front this event creates a great bit of energy across the year it's a great way to stay in top physical shape firefighters are required to be in excellent physical condition and the welsh firefighter challenge is a perfect way to test and improve your fitness if you've never attended we strongly suggest that you do and you'll get to meet and bond with other firefighters it's a great way to build camaraderie and friendships with your fellow firefighters all across the uk as well as having the opportunity to showcase your skills and abilities the welsh firefighter challenge and as well as the relays that they have as well similar to the british is a great chance to demonstrate strength endurance and teamwork skills to the rest of the community that we serve it's a hell of a lot of fun and you get everyone's families and kids and dogs everyone comes it's really really great so today's episode is a bit of a debrief we met up with the team the day after got together in a local weatherspoons out on the top of a beautiful sun-drenched terrace and we talked about the event the good the bad the ugly the penalties the layout of the course how it's put together we acknowledged some great athletes and some great performances and it was just a nice way to cap off a really really fantastic event so on today's recording you'll hear from a lot of the team on the Welsh Firefighter Challenge of course joined once again by Sarah Bromley who's down there competing for the first time in the Welsh Firefighter Challenge kicking ass and taking names and then from the Welsh team itself we've got Dominic Norcross, Lee Rees, Luke Fisher and Tim Frost on today's podcast so once again it was an absolute pleasure to be down there hosting and competing myself and it's a pleasure to be able to bring this to you for an insight into how it's all put together and if you want to find out some more information for it be sure to drop into the notes there'll be a link to their instagram page there you can order their hoodies and apparel if you didn't get one of them you can register for next year's interest for the event and there's also an email address there if you want to contact the team for anything else so with all that said and done it's my pleasure to bring to you the welsh firefighter challenge organizing team and as always i'll see you on the other side do you know why i do that make sure you can clap in the morning yes yeah, it's just a <laughs> cognitive thing so make sure i'm not having a stroke yeah, yeah they're all six they're all six separate tracks you've got the same problem i've got my wife has to pluck my eyebrows because you've got a rogue just here no, no. <laughs> no not the middle here this, here. Yeah, yeah, this is my love this is you lose his eye now Daddy. not my high eyebrow though you two, you? we look after each other yeah. yes nice beautiful so dom yeah. Are you hungover? You look rough. Uh, <laughs> no, I would have said he looks all right, <laughs> but he sounds rough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Post-event debrief. Uh, how did it go last night? I mean, well, how did yesterday go? So when did we get here, Sarah? We got here about five o'clock. Five o'clock. Friday evening. I'm glad we got here early enough because we wanted to catch up with everybody and, and you know have a chat before. I know you guys do the, the partners evening before and we got to see the MSA and, and hikes were down and the Lifelines gang were down. So, so that was great. But I always think with the Welsh... You guys have got such a heavy lift in the morning because it's not like the British and everything where they can set up before. You guys got to the event at what, like 6 a.m., 5 a.m.? Yeah, we got there 6, six in the morning just to uh, sort it all out. This is why I think it's so hard for the organisers because you, after all that, you still medalled yesterday, you know, <laughs> and people forget. And I always, me and John talk about this ad nauseum about the people that show up and don't help out and just come and do their event and go away. They're not willing to get in there and just be a helper or get on a stall or hand out some hoodies or get some times or be a moron on a microphone for eight hours or something like that. It is tough striking that balance, isn't it? Between like people wanting to come and have a good event, but in the back of your head, you're constantly like, I want everyone to have a great time. This isn't ready. Who's doing this? Right. I know you're having a chat, but can you just please, it needs to start now. <laughs> Go and get on the thing. Yeah, we, we were pushed for time yesterday, but it, it, 
it actually w went surprisingly well. It went incredibly well. I mean, people say every time you come to Wales, it's horrific weather, but like we seem to have got away with it really nice. It's, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely stunning it now. Has we're been sat been stunning. on a roof terrace. We are sat on, we're, we're, so, we're at Weatherspoons weather in Swansea Sunday, on a roof terrace. We might as well be in a Mediterranean. <laughs> I'm wearing my dog walking clothes. I feel like we've got the palm trees. We just need a couple of beers now. So we set up yesterday morning um, bright and early. What, what did you guys have to get ready? Because we swapped the venue, didn't we, this time? We had another. Why did we lose the last one, Lee? This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Gore-Tex Professional Fabrics. Now, we all know the working environment of a firefighter is filled with challenges. We face serious risks on the job, such as heat exhaustion, burns, physical and mental stress. And we frequently come into contact with high levels of toxic chemicals. Now, I have been wearing Gore-Tex for nearly two decades on the front line, working in hostile environments, tackling challenging incidents from firefighting to water incidents and in urban search and rescue environments. Gore-Tex have a well-earned reputation for protecting professionals in the fire and emergency services through their family of highly innovative, waterproof, breathable moisture barriers that exceeds global performance standards and are trusted worldwide. Gore-Tex, going further together. Yeah, unfortunately, where we had it last year, um, they were apparently going to dig up all the, the paving stones, which they didn't do in the end. Motherfuckers. So, yeah, so we did have to get Council. a venue, which, uh, bless him, Tim managed to sort out. But I think it worked pretty well where we were yesterday. It was a lovely venue last year because we had like that, that castle thing. Behind. What was that place called? The town Square. centre? Yeah, Castle, castle Square. Castle Square. Castle Square. Castle Square. Yeah. So they had like the beautiful fountains in it, but it was logistic, a very tight space, yeah. and it was tough to make that work, wasn't it? Because then it would have been a short call. I actually think we got off with a winner this time, because that was actually a kind of a nice, it was a much bigger space, wasn't it? Yeah. We had yeah, more space to yeah. play with. Yeah, yeah, slightly shorter course, but the, the course is the same for everyone, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah we, it's a zero sum yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, we, we had the turn and the dummy, but again, I think that was that worked out quite well in the end, yeah. didn't it? And it that meant did the go badly, because we were talking about the undulating floor, weren't we? And like there was going to be a dip. I didn't yeah. personally remotely notice it when I was no. out there. No, not at all. No. I was I more worried, like drain grids. Or, you just, yeah, you spent you spent a lot of time with your dummy, so you had a lot of time to think about <laughs> the aspect on that. I'm joking. Hey, I'm going back stronger in two oh, You're going back stronger, <laughs> hell, hell. and I like that you took that as well. I slipped that one in there, so you take yeah, it. Yeah, no, took no, it well. um, so we kicked it off. It was supposed to start at 9 a.m. We had chief fire officer come down. And how many services do we have at this one? How many how many people compete and how many services? It was uh, 120 entered. Oh, is that it? Wow. Yeah, I think just over 100 turned up. And then it was 27, was it? Yeah, 27 brigades, yeah. That's 27 a good turnout. That's 27 great, isn't it? Is good. Getting and, that and many people. The real to. bonus was the amount of female firefighters that turned up. Yeah. I think, uh, oh, I think yeah. we had three full relay teams of females. Three full didn't relay we? teams. And then we had all the mix. Was it, it was nearly 30 females. Oh, 32. That's incredible, isn't it? Because yeah. yeah. they always speak about, I mean, Sarah, you'll know this better than anyone, how scary it is women coming into the service, A as a wanna, doing their apprenticeship, feeling that imposter syndrome. We were talking to Kirsty from uh, Merseyside yesterday. Mm. And she was saying, like, it's really tough for them. And Merseyside's massive, and they yeah. get loads of support, they get leave, they get money, they yeah, get yeah. vans, they get everything given to them. Yeah, and it's basically, yeah. like, just like Kirsty's the only one doing it. Yeah, she was it saying that some of the females just don't want to put themselves out there. They just think, oh, I don't know, I'm not good enough. And she said some of them were training for, like, Ironmans and things like that, but just didn't quite feel that they'd fit this mould, mm. which is a shame. It is true, because we, we used to talk talking about it yesterday as well, like there's so many good athletes in our brigade as well. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. They, they're not representing and like we look at them and they, they can do really well. They're, That's where I feel really like it's well. a bit of a trick, yeah. Like, like we've got international rugby players, we've got guys <laughs> who, who yeah. are going uh, to the top top in the, the CrossFit game and then yeah. to, to come and run three minutes, four yeah. minutes, five minutes on a course. So, so something frightens them. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it is it, a very shame, different isn't thing though, isn't it? Because it's like we had Zach. Kid. Yeah, Zach's, Zach's a daunting. very, very, very strong uh, lad. He's a very, very competitive crossfit athlete. And then we've had people like Matt Chan, who does the, he came second to Rich Froning in 2000 or whatever it was in the CrossFit Games. But when you put someone on the fire kit and you're literally going from zero to 100 so fast, it's not that progressive. Even some of the shorter CrossFit workouts are still like 20 minutes long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what All I mean? All out and, 20 and, minutes. Yeah, and then yeah. They're, they're, they're getting up to their peak. But with this, you've got to try and change gears so, so fast. It is peak 
as long as you can. Yeah. yeah. And even for people, they, they blow out, especially when they're hitting this dummy. So we used the 70 kilo dummy for this one. Did you use a 70 kilo dummy yeah, last year? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Last year as well. We were playing around when we were sat. Who was I sat with? I was sat with you, wasn't I? In the um, little uh, hub where we were having some food yesterday. And we were talking uh, about yeah. other events to do. I'd love to have an event where there's like. The, the progressive one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah where you go like, I was saying we should do a 55 kilo dummy there and back. Or you can even do like a relay. And then a 70 kilo there oh, and like back, and then a 100 the kilo like, yeah, there yeah, and yeah. back as fast as you can. Because even though people like me performed quite well yesterday, I do feel it's not as suited to some of the, because this is the thing like firefighters, when we're teaching structural firefighting or firefighting in general, you're working hard ish for like 20, 25 minutes. So this is the peak if shit hits the fan and you've got to go as hard as you can at a house fire straight away. But most incidents, you've got to be able to do grunt work as yep. a firefighter. You've got to be able to keep going for like 15, 20 minutes. So I would love to have, that's where the TFA model kind of suited that element of it. It was a 20 minutes, four or five minute sections. Yeah. And you have to be able to keep it going. I'd love to see a longer event like that somewhere in the yeah. UK. I don't know yeah, what that the- would be um, brilliant actually. Yeah, yeah well we spoke really about good. like a team event, isn't it? So yeah. can we get two, two males, two females yeah. together yeah. as a team, come as a service and well, let, let, let's use the... What would you put in it? In other news, this episode is brought to you in partnership with MSA Safety. Today, we have them to thank for the improved firefighter safety through connectivity in their brand new connected firefighter system. At the center of the connected firefighter platform is the MSA M1 SCBA with telemetry. You can view battery life, air pressure, and estimated time remaining either independently on the M1 itself or from the lunar connected device screen. Also, still with the air status alarm information, search status, and all of this provided to the incident command for confident decision making during the scene. That integrates straight in with the lunar system, which is a wireless all-in-one device creating an independent search and rescue network, providing edge detection, enhanced personal thermal imaging, while simplifying post-scene reporting and data retention. One of the key parts of the Luna is their FAST system, the Firefighting Assisting Search Technology. This combines directional and distance information with thermal imaging to help find separated teammates and decrease response time. It actually connects you to the other crews in the vicinity for a unified search during the time of mutual aid by instantly notifying the network of lunar devices when there is a downed crew member, allowing for a prompt search and rescue. All of this then plugs into the FireGrid system for cloud-based connectivity, real-time information, and data-driven decisions for the incident commander. It enables you to see the exact location of your firefighters on the scene. And it doesn't require you to be sat on the station. The MSA hub then provides a wireless gateway straight to the cloud, enabling wireless on-scene data for local and remote incident command for additional eyes on the scene. MSA are truly taking massive strides in the future of improved firefighter safety through connectivity. MSA is dedicated to increasing safety in the fire service through technological advancements. Various feature enhancements, new products, partnerships, and integrations will provide additional capabilities readily accessible by products, software, and services in the brand new MSA Connected Firefighter platform. Now back to the show. So we spoke about the dummies. I love, is it Allen's? Are they thinking of putting a tire in it? Who's, putting, who's thinking of putting a tire in a challenge event? It must event? be Allen's, because that's the newest one, oh, isn't the, it? The, the South, South Coast, Coast. yeah. Because they want to have something different about every single, yes. like you yeah. guys have got the RTC loading, which is different, and you don't yeah, have the tower, good. so it's a different variation. What would you put in a dream event if you, if you could throw some extra spicy stuff in there, because a lot of it is. What, what like, about we got the dream event? I know. Well, yeah, <laughs> assuming <laughs> this, isn't like it? This <laughs> if you wanted another dream, <laughs> yeah. Assuming logistics, because the problem with this is you've got to set it all up. Like the yeah. tower thing is would be a massive ball egg, so we haven't got a tower, and that's fine because again that makes it different. But like, is there anything? If it wasn't, I'm not saying like I mean maybe you would put a truck pull in there or something like that. But if it wasn't limited by logistics, I'm not coming to what, that one. Well, this is what I'm saying because then. On the beach. A lot of firefighters, oh, yeah. they're the heavier oh, no, lumps, yeah. aren't they? They're heavier lugging yeah. lumps. You know, we're yes. not the fast, rapid Jameses no. of the world and people like that. <laughs> and you know, Simon Corver, he is he's a whippet. Yeah. Yeah. That boy is yeah. so fast. And when yeah. he does hit the dummies and stuff like that, and even the fourth century machine, that's what slows him down. Yeah. They would prefer more of a sprint event. But yeah. then my argument is, well, that's not total firefighting because a lot of our stuff is lifting and no, moving it's and it's dragging overall strength it's an overall yeah. fitness it's, it's trying to make it link up to what we yeah. do yeah. Yeah. but then make it that competitive element at the same I like time. the idea of charged hoses did I speak to you yes. about charged hoses yeah. like if you had because in the fire fit model they have I think it's two lengths yeah. and obviously they pick it oh, go they, they sprint be, turn it on, don't they? And, then, and they have to switch it on but if you had to work as a team of two 
and you had like three charge lengths of 70 mil hose. Yeah. And we say, right, you've got to advance down this course yeah. and then you've got to come back, get the 55, come back, get the 70, come back, get the 100, something like that. Because again, you say truck pull, well, Pete, what the fuck's that got to do with the fire service? That's not really, you know, now you're just trying to make it into a strongman event and build your own event, basically. You're, 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 a, weak, you're a weak strongman who wants to do a bit of firefighting. That's what you're basically saying. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, Atlas Stones, it? No, but like, what would you put in if you could throw some stuff into the mix to make it like a challenging, a more, a different kind of challenging firefighting? For people that are putting those regional events together, they're looking for something new. We, we have thought about doing like a, an underrunning of a ladder, yes. didn't we? But yeah. logistically, mm. you'd need obviously a scaffolding the land yeah. need to be fixed but in, they've done it I was going to say do you Europe. think so yeah in the TFA you have yeah, to pitch yeah. to no not 9 metres are they Because the, so the American models have a 9 metre 3 piece ladder that they so, oh no, sorry so it's a 9 piece 2 metre that they can separate out and then they pitch them both independently if they want to as like 4 and a half or whatever they are yeah I don't know how much health and safety would get in the way of that in yeah. some English services yeah. and brigades yeah yeah because we, we did talk about that when we, we were trying to put it together because we didn't have the tower yeah we were we were talking about something instead of that mm. but we um yeah our service weren't all that no. impressed with it because no. <laughs> in the uk there are only nine meters there i mean you could give them a single length of triple x but then it'd be like what's the point yeah, yeah. yeah. you could just throw that from wherever yeah, couldn't you the yeah. cfs ladder yeah <laughs> people people would start getting upset about how many people are pitching it are we teaching poor manual handling yeah. all that sort mm. of jazz but i would love to see I think we could get away with a tire. I know it's nothing to do with firefighting, but there is a, I saw Martin, you know Martin from Germany that we uh -huh, met at yes. TFA? Martin went to an event where they do have a tire flip in, I can't remember which one it is, but the, um, if John Gregory was here, it'd be so much more useful. We have the uh, event that gets ran in Germany as well, and it's, um, it's Opa's event, where you start off with a row, and I think you do 500 meters rowing in just in your gym kit, you get off that and you do, I think it's like 20 step ups with 20 kilo barrels, because that'd be an easy one to put in. Yeah. You know, the barrels, yeah. and you have to step onto a box. Mm, yeah. You step up and down onto a box to like 20 or 30 times. And then I think you have a 40 kilo bar, and you have to do like 30 deadlifts, and then it's fire kit on, and then it's up the tower, and it's a little bit BFC from that point onwards, but then you have a log versus a casualty. It's a really hard steel log, yeah. and it's got these, uh, sorry, it's a really hard wooden log, and it's got the steel spikes, the spikes, steel handles that stick out the side of it. That's how Mickey broke his foot. Oh. Yeah, someone dropped that, that oh. steel thing on Mickey's foot and he broke his foot when we were out there. That was hilarious. <laughs> but um, not for him. But things like that, you could put a rower in it, couldn't you? Yeah, quite easily. I think uh, London used to, I'm sure years ago when I first joined the service, I think uh, London were doing something in Covent Garden with a, with a rower and then they got off that and then did the sort of kind of BFC kind oh, okay. of. I think that'd be sustainable yeah. because a lot of services yeah. have got rowers yeah. in their gyms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys and had it's, a rower. It's that kind of fitness as well. As the warm up, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 a rower could work. Yeah. I'd like to throw or something like that in there because it would smoke people early. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it would. Or a yeah. salt, salt bike. Yes. Yeah. Oh, people that eat them, so let's do that. I hate the assault, assault bikes. Would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Feel like 50 calories on an echo yeah. bike. Yeah. 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 Then start. four hours later, we're on to the next stage. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> as well, if you had to genuinely get in your, because this was the thing about Oprah's event was, because you had to get in your fire kit. Yeah. Oh, okay. A lot of these Gucci lace ups, because there were some people again yesterday where you're like, man, that ain't a structural firefighter boot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the hikes, they've got their quick, fast and stuff, so those fit, and it still did take you a bit more time, I'll be honest, than just slipping on a, a set of welly boots. But some of these, there's complex lace-ups that I saw yesterday, and I'm like, I can see the laces. Yeah. There's no way that's a structural firefighter yeah. boot, because yeah. the laces burn. Do you know what I mean? And that's the thing, but I think if you had that, it forced people into, again, it'd just be a different dynamic. Yeah. So yeah, I'd love to see a charge length I'd love to see a rower and echo in. Getting dressed though, isn't it? Getting in the kit. Is I think the public would like that. Anyway, so it's I think the public would like that. We're just yeah. making it as adults. I well, that. but we yeah, do yeah. it, don't we? It's like turning out. You've got to get ready as quick yeah. as you can. People spend ages yeah, faffing with element. their kit, making it perfect, yeah. Yeah. pulling their sleeves yeah, up, actually. putting their Gucci helmets and stuff like that, forcing people to get in their kit quickly. Because then again, we'd have that balance of the people that would do it steady. 
because they'd make sure they had it on properly because if you don't get your helmet on properly and it's not tight it is going to become a hindrance later mm. on in the course mm, yeah. or so you'd have something that would just literally throw it on further down the line you'd be thinking oh I'm struggling here but that is more realistic isn't it yeah, for so a that's, yeah, yeah. that's what we it. have to do yeah it's like saying well you wouldn't turn up on the truck in that stuff because yeah. you ain't got that much time to piss about it's also under air as well we didn't do under air over here no. No. no but that's again the you've either got to have a massive bank of bottles already ready but you've got to have a compressor and if you had a big enough bank because you can get those slow little mobile compressors in the back yeah. of a van and but they do take a long time to do so realistically you're only gonna get four cylinders done yeah. maybe in an hour yeah so if you had a big enough bank and you could filter through them but yeah i haven't seen one under air in the uk yet no. i think that would be an interesting one to see yeah I, I like the idea of the kit changing but i think logistically even running that over a day because i was it would it would make it a longer course it would be a really long because then yeah. you start to limit your athletes yeah. you know you guys managed to get in 120 athletes I don't think the British managed to do that in a single day. We did 200 over two days, I think. Yeah, John yeah. would know better than me, but you're limited by it, yeah. You guys yeah. have a five or a six minute time cap? Six, six minutes. You have a six, six minute, same as the BFC. Yeah, same as the BFC. They, they, yeah. they went through the, the, the what you call it, they, they took all the data from Hull mm. and they realized that at six minutes, the body just, just yeah, your body temperature yeah, keeps increasing. Yeah, it just spirals yeah. out of control yeah. after A, your body minutes. temperature, but B, your lactic threshold, most people, because yeah. you're operating at that length. Yeah. But the other thing I was going to say, actually, is we run twos, don't we? And the BFC yeah. run twos because of the tower. Yeah. Opus ran fours. That's what I remember now. You had four uh, athletes right, on the court, okay. yeah. which, again, God. from the public's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. But if you didn't have a tower, you can do that. Absolutely. I think we could have ran three yesterday, you know? Yeah, I think we would have had space to run three. Yeah. You'd have to piss about stretching that, that finish line. But it is just another set of stuff. Yeah, we just need another core haven. You know what? You could do you borrow the BFCs for this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There is another core. I mean, so the uh, Knots lads in. have got a one, no. haven't they? Ah, so yeah, the Knots have. Got the Knots one, have yeah. got one. So, the Gloucestershire have got their own, I think. No, have they? Gloucestershire haven't. No, I don't Cheshire, think. I'm pretty sure have. But also, John's getting the new. Yeah, he's getting the piston mm. ones. For so the there's British, no reason. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't necessarily go piston versus core haven, but I reckon you could get three core havens. Yeah. I know I'm, I'm pushing you now for next year's thing, but you could get I'm another. I'm excited for next year. We've got rowing, getting yeah. dressed. You could get another 40 athletes to the day. Yeah. Well, stones. I don't know if you'd want to change the model because the model is the model now. Yeah. But you could stretch the course, as in you could have three running. Yeah. That would be tasty, would wouldn't it? And that would be so engaging for the public. Mm. So, so the top three athletes. Every way to look, head. wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, if you don't hold that near your face, I won't hear what you say. If you do this. <laughs> but no, go on, sorry. If you had those yeah, yeah, athletes. Yeah, <coughs> categorise them as well, like yeah. from previous times. Yeah, yeah. You're going head to head, like, you have some good. good that would made those. Like, if we'd have had me, James, and Matt Adams Matt. Yeah. all yeah, running in the awesome. same yeah. one, and then Matt takes a fall, and yeah. I miss the thing, and you sprint ahead <laughs> at the beginning. Pressure on, pressure on, pressure on. That would make it really nice. So, anyway, take us, take us to the event. So, it went well. We had uh, Roger Thomas. Yeah, Roger Thomas came Chief, to yeah. the senior leadership kickoff. It's nice that they keep coming because this yeah. is different than that. The British, the British are just putting that load on one service each year. Yeah. You guys, it's a big ass. Do you get much pushback from it? Do they want to? The Chiefs be brilliant. Roger's yeah. been amazing. How long's um, he in for? Has he got another year? Two I years? Think he's got another two years. Okay. By need which to, time need to focus should. on that transition. Yeah. So um, <laughs> Roger kicked us off. Um, then we started the event. Who's what was surprises were from yesterday? Did anybody see anything that they were like? Wow, didn't see that person coming out of the woodwork. That person performed well. Who were some of the impressive ones? The team here at the podcast are extremely excited to announce our brand new partnership with Patrol Store UK. Patrol Store been serving the UK's police, fire and emergency communities and first responder sector since 2008, providing leading brands such as Hikes, Magnum, 511, Nebo, Opzulu, Highlander, AKU and many, many more of our favourites. They are now also supplying bespoke uniform, PPE and station workwear to fire services around the UK. So for all our listeners that are part of your USAR, your HART team, your ISAR team, your armed response teams, your fire investigation, your NALO, your HAZMAT and all of the training departments that have got your own budgets be sure to get the absolute best for your team at a realistic price by contacting aaron and the team at patrol store and referencing the firefighters podcast patrol store will also be taking part in our listener competition giveaways as well as providing unique discounts to podcast listeners so for people that are always asking about hikes boots as an example that is one unique discount code that is coming to you very soon through patrol store we've also got some incredible bags i mean the opzulu bags are a game changer so you know the really gucci and expensive tactical black bags that everyone's using in crossfit workouts and taking to the gym and taking to stations well they've basically got that but it's made better and costs less 
because they're not slapping some Gucci expensive brand name on it and it's giving you what you want on a first responder salary. So it's a privilege to be working with Aaron and the team and supporting UK businesses as well as bringing high quality uniform, footwear, bags, PP and station workwear to the UK's first responder sector without having to pay those inflated international prices that we've previously had to endure. So be sure to keep your eyes in the notes of the episodes for links to unique offers and discount codes. And if you're looking to buy well and buy once, be sure to get in the notes and head over to Patrol Store UK. Now back to the show. But we had a we had a conversation because obviously the people that are winning with the in terms of like the the hikes boots is always the same winners that are getting the boots and people are ending up with two or three sets of boots. So we yeah. had a, we had a conversation before then about was I supposed to get a set of boots? No, no, nope. right. So this is really, happy with your of, Williams would watch. Rude. You've, you've instead got of winners, <laughs> winners having it, we went on the the newest upcomer, didn't we? Yeah, oh, we, well, nice. we went on. Uh, yeah, Zoe, so, 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 no, so the heart of the competition. She yeah. was, uh, she was awesome. Yeah, and Tanya, Tanya Fulcher's going to get a set of boots as well. She's from Mid and West, but she, uh, it was the most impressive sort of performance. She really dug in and uh, finished with a second to go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, because I know everybody it. gives everything on the course, like you know, me and Matt, and everyone gave everything they could. Hey, Danny, but for. Other people, I always say, like, with all due respect to Sarah, like I say, Sarah's run for me was more impressive yeah. than my run because yeah. a, it's the first time she's ever done the course, yeah. and she had to give it all. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, like Matt and I, yes, we were smoked at the end, but we didn't. Oh, we could pause this anyway. You going? Cheers, guys. Love you, love you, love you, bye. You sound delicate. <laughs> She'll sleep on the way up here, then mine on the way back. <laughs> yeah, so we've got Zoe and um, who's the other lady? Fulcher. Ta- Tiny Fulcher. Tiny yeah. Fulcher, yeah, because it's nice to spread that out, isn't it? Yeah, we, we said to Simon, when Tim said to Simon, we, we, the people who are winning it, they win it every time. Yeah. <laughs> the same old, same old, otherwise, isn't it? Yeah. They are the best. And that can just actually eventually become demoralising <laughs> for the people that, that don't know. Yeah. No, no, it does, because they're like, well, yeah, yeah I'm going to go and be the best version of myself, but I'm probably not going to win. Yeah. So what's the point in it? But like I was saying a minute ago, I think it's more impressive to see those people that have to yes. give everything. Really dig it. Because otherwise, you yeah, you, you you run it and you do it really well, but that's probably only 60, 70, 80% of you because you probably could have done it again after that. Yeah. And that's why it's more impressive and inspiring to see these people like Sarah coming out into the course for the first time absolutely smashing like you were toe to toe with Chrissy until you hit the wall with with the dummy and then you just oh, have to work wall, your way through like, it, it was, right I have a new appreciation for that for that for the, for the five fight challenges even though I already did doing it yesterday now has definitely got a, a new appreciation for it because it genuinely took me an hour uh, James will verify this it took me an hour to yeah. recover my heart rate did not drop below 100 for over an, for an hour yeah and my heart rate max was 191. It's such a special, wow. it's like such a what, special fitness. It, it's, it is. It's, it's a whole different kind of thing. Yeah. And like, you know, getting into a CrossFit gym and taking all your clothes off and just bouncing around in your pants for yeah. 30 minutes, it's really so fucking it's hard. Incredible. And they're so very impressive athletes. But I remember the totally first time different. I realized that was when we had, um, you know, Adam Peaty. Yeah. Who's the, so me and John had him uh, come for a competition where we were and had all the British women come. And they all did the run and everything like that. Loads of them didn't finish it. Yeah. Loads of them finished, but like were absolutely smoked. Because the coaches do stuff like that. They go to local football teams and they just do little events to break the cycle of the training. Um, but afterwards, they were like, you know, I'm not sure this was a good idea because like <laughs> we might have hurt some of the athletes, and you know, we have to maybe maybe look at what we're actually doing next time before we ask them to do it. Because uh, yeah, we beat Adam by like a good couple of minutes. Yeah, you know, he was nowhere near it. If you're a regular listener to the podcast, then chances are you are big into your own personal development and the development of firefighters around you. So I wanted to remind you of our mobile app drill book. This is a free training and development resources made by a firefighters for firefighters. Heading on to Drillbook, you will find incident debriefs, radio messages, knots and lines, quick reference guides, quizzes every single day. We've got useful links to the ERG, to Web Rescue, to Jessup, Euro Rescue, 10 Second Triage, National Operational Guidance, and not to mention our daily quizzes where you will find questions on extrication, casualty handling, breathing apparatus, fire development, water rescue, rope rescue, you name it. It is the go-to resource if you've got a spare five minutes on the firehouse to develop yourself and those around you. Not only that, if you're looking to get into the fire service, we've got advice on there on interview questions, interview answers. You can build your own questioning in there. And again, remember, this is built by firefighters 
four firefighters. So you can add your own drills in there. You can pick the drills that you find the most favorite. There is literally hundreds of training ideas, hundreds of drills in there. Remember, this app is absolutely free and it grows every single day down to the contributions of our thousands and thousands of users. It's freely available on Android, Apple, and you will find it in the links for this podcast. Remember, it's called personal development. The clue's in the name. You've got to work twice as hard on yourself as you do on the job. So always be growing, always be developing. Now let's get back to the show. So it takes us back to the event. We did 120 athletes over the course of the day. We had Zoe was really impressive for me. It was great to see yeah. Helena come out and crush it again. She was super nervous because it's hard coming back that second year. And Sarah's got stronger. Chrissy's got stronger. Chrissy did well again. She did. Yeah. You know, it is always going to be hard. I spoke to Chrissy before, and obviously we raced against each other. And she said, when she went obviously abroad this year and did one was it um, and did a fire fit. Yeah. And she said going to a fire fit is one thing because obviously it's a different country and it's new thing. No expectation. Yeah, but coming back here. And, she, and obviously been she's been like she's a favourite and she's mm. strong, she's brilliant and she's ran so many amazing races in the previous years. There is that pressure and then we all put that pressure on ourselves. Yeah. So it, it, it yeah. is difficult mm. coming back and you're thinking, okay, you know you want to do well and but you know there's that expectation as well. Yeah. Talk us through the, the penalties, Dom. So are they all worth the same amount? Yeah, they're all worth five seconds. It's a lot of time, that is, mate. It's a massive a amount of time, course. but you have Shouldn't to be... some of them be three and some of no. them be five? No. no. Five makes it easier, doesn't it? Five, five, though. No, if... if so if we're all five, five, five it's easy mass, isn't it? Yeah. So five. No, it's uh, not only that. <laughs> <laughs> You'd say it's that. Even numbers. It's Twos accurate. are easier, you know? <laughs> it's easier to be accurate, or it's quicker to be accurate. Yeah. It, it brings in that discipline, doesn't it? How do you justify what warrants more penalty as well? Yeah. Well... So obviously Just because you want some. I got, I got a penalty. <laughs> so it's all right. The RTC kit, you put it on the shelf and there's a hose in the middle, isn't there? And you've yeah. got to stick to your side because you can't yeah. just be pushed into other people's lanes. You still I don't. threw my first or my second piece on. I forget which one it was. And it was like... Stroking, yeah, it was stroking yeah, yeah, yeah. the hose. Oh, not five seconds. Well, like, as your referee, I think it's you, your discipline, isn't it, bro? Yeah, yeah. You can get but it was. Side, I was you like, had plenty of room on the right hand I side. I know, so it's more than big enough. James more James than big enough. Yeah. But I was like, five seconds for that? <laughs> I was like, what? I had to run against this John. If he didn't win, but he did, so I don't yeah, know I don't what really this really conversation is about. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm running against John with the British agents ago, I had my foot on one of the steps, and I got a five second penalty for that. I'm like, Really? I'm like, you see on the video, we start at the same time, but you do need to have the... So what, what were the possible penalties? Because I know there was a sheet. Penalties, there was a false start was a penalty. Yeah. Uh, you nearly... I thought the, there was a false start on Sarah. Was, did Chrissy Chris, get a penalty? Chrissy got a false start, yeah. yeah she got a false start. Because yeah, that's what panicked you, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I was like... Like I've said to a few people, when them, them <laughs> dogs race and they see the bunny and they go, oh my God, go! Yeah, yeah. And literally, I saw her go and I was like... Oh no, the whistle ain't gone. Then when the whistle went, I was like, go, go, go. Oh, no. And then I was just ran as fast as I just went to chase her. <laughs> so false starts are five uh, seconds. False starts, uh, the Cleveland flaked hose. If it doesn't actually, if it doesn't stay on the mat, it's mm -hmm. got to be placed on the mat. How much on the mat? Just stay on the mat. Me okay. and Chrissy had to both go back and rectify ours. So yeah, it yeah. Off. If it falls if it's off. Too, but if it's not touching the floor, that's okay. Because like some of them were just over the edge yeah so I think as, I, as long as it's on when, anyway, when, when on. we spoke about it in the morning it was as long as it stays on the mat yeah okay uh, so it stays on the mat what else uh, does someone get a penalty for throwing the branch down too vigorously yes, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, that, did that happen that's did a hard get judgment that one? yeah they did yeah, oh, I, didn't, yeah. I think Simon yeah. Simon Calder got a penalty for that yeah, yeah so I, I don't know if we're definite but I'm sure he did because what how do we define throwing versus placing versus discarding versus well, we've got to look I, I after the kit haven't we yeah. Yeah. we've got to look after the kit you can't be smashing expensive right. branches and we down push that in floor. service anyway so again yeah. that's just a mirror yeah. image of that yeah, yeah. what else have we got uh, we've got uh, RTC obviously yeah the, uh, the load <laughs> if, you, if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you smash it oh, into well. the table or if you put it over your designated area yeah even slightly like yeah. yourself <laughs> Space Invader. The, the usual Cole Haven uh, miss hits. Uh, you know, I watched the video back on mine. I feel like the tap should come from the ref because we had yes. a lovely bloke that was helping out who was tapping people for them. Mine goes all the way off the end when right. I'm watching the video. And I'm like, he should have hit me earlier. I could have got he's off there a lot quicker. Yeah, he's good. No, for somebody who won, he's... Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I was just like, I wasted too much time on that call, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, it's got to go to the end. Yeah. Oh, it's got to the end. 
Um, or is that another penalty for hitting off off the end? You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we have the watch back? Yeah, yeah, let's go back and look at the <laughs> scores the again. Yeah. <laughs> so Corhaven off the end. Corhaven off the end. Um, what about knocking the extinguishers? Does that matter? No. It doesn't matter. No. Because that's staying in your lane, though, isn't it? Um, I don't know if anybody actually. No, no, one, no. no one did it. No. But I'm I thinking think if they did, because yeah. the box you was a penalty, yeah. wasn't it? Because I saw box, that in the video. If you, if you move the box, yeah, you can touch the box. It's fine. Yeah, but if you move, but it the is box, marked, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's got to stay where it is. Yeah. Some people did have some really. There was a lot of host penalties, wasn't there? Yeah, a lot. Yes, there yeah. was. You know, and even it, I was just dropping a knee, and you just lying aside, sight. You look down, and you're like, that's it. I should, I can't, should not. Be. And it is plenty big enough. Yes, it is plenty. I saw some very. Fastly done, and yeah. when they go in, because you and you're like, Oh, is that gonna? And it did, and I thought, Okay, yeah. well, Alan and their team they're doing the they're flapping over first, aren't they? Yeah. they're like flapping over first, and then what? I don't I've seen a few people works. do that. I don't, and I asked, I don't think it, I'm not sold. I'm on back that. old school for recruit, like recruit school. Me, I yeah. can't help but get down and do it, yeah, because I think the, the bit ground. of time you lose at the beginning doing that, you make up because it's such a tighter you role, yeah, yeah. You when you this. build the speed, it can yeah, really, yeah. really start to develop through that. So, is there any more penalties? That we're um, there? One of them was they're putting the hammer on the mat, wasn't it? A lot of people were putting oh, the head yeah. of the hammer on the mat. A lot of penalties. Well, someone just threw it down onto yeah, the core yeah, haven. Yeah. yeah. I forget oh, who it was it is. She was like, oh, I've done that. Yeah, and then she had to. I'm thinking if she got it stuck for a second, I'm like, onto the mat. So, is it the head of the ladder, the handle, the shaft? What is it? Which bit's got to be on? The head. As long as the head is within the matted area. Head. It just stops people throwing it on the floor. Cool. I think I clarified that with you, didn't I? Yeah, before, Because yeah. I didn't want to get that one wrong. I, yeah. I was thinking, um, is it all of it or? The phone cans phone as well. Cans. As we found out on the relay, all four of us fell over, so we had a 20 second penalty. Oh, oh a few Barely, people yeah. did that. Fell over. It's all right, I'll take the penalty. Did. Oh, the barrels fell the over. The barrel, yeah, the phone cans. Are... Oh, you got a 20 second penalty? 20 second penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, seconds. God. Well, are you allowed to, you're allowed to go oh. back and correct it if you want to. If you haven't started the next equipment. Ah, but if you move, yeah, technically if, by then you've moved yeah, on. Yeah, you've moved on. Who, somebody like went, yeah, because this I saw someone pick up the branch to run with it and they hadn't got the hammer on the mat and then they went back to move the hammer, nice. but they'd already touched the branch, so they've already moved on. They've already yeah. moved on. Right. Yeah, yeah and that's it, isn't it? Because yeah. you get so used to that. And I did it with the RTC kit. You just dis, you like discard, yeah, head moves on, on and you've not glanced back. Yeah. And that's another one with the hose on the mats. It's like, Discard, but if I glance back, yeah. am I there yet? Have I got to go back yeah. and put that back on? And then the, the the dummy then, if you hit the box on the turn, yeah, or if you, it, if, yeah. you, if you move the box on the turn. Oh really? Yeah. If you move yeah, the box yeah, I remember on the turn. that one. I won't move it at that point, it's no matter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone did, mind yeah, you. Yeah, we're not, we're not talking about. Box. A little bit. You no, we are talking like out of its. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so yeah, yeah. If you're shunting out the way to gain time, yeah, like, yeah, you can tell, Kat. Okay, yeah, but if it's a well, slight knock, because they, yeah. they, they, it will move. It's only yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's accuracy and it's uh, yeah. spatial awareness as well. And you, yeah. you, you move with the dummy, so you, you've got to have that kind of yeah, you should. And, and the referee gives you three, two, one, yeah, box turn, yeah, so yes. yeah. There's someone always with you, isn't there? I think that uh, levels the playing field a little bit as well from like your Matt Adamses of the world who can just get it and go. The fact yeah. they've got to slow down and turn, yeah. I think and that actually adds a nice yeah. dynamic to it that, as well, to be honest. Again is, that is, is good because some people a... said they would like just a straight, but yeah. then like you said, yeah. That... Yeah, they would because they'll just blast it. Yeah, yeah, but so then giving that turn, it does yeah. it does add something to the mix. Mm. Yeah. I can move all right with it. I'm not massively fast with it. Like, even when I go against John, who's not a massively strong athlete. No, he can move with it, he can move yeah. so well. He said that to me last dummy. night, actually. If he was got toe-to-toe -to -toe -to -toe with you on that bit... Oh, yeah, beat me. Everyone knows... That, well, not everyone knows the strengths, but, like, you have an idea, don't you, of what you've got. Yeah. And he said, if I can get, if I can be level with him, yeah. I know I can just move with him. He knows he can do me on the yeah. door. So I think I've just got slow, ploddy legs still. And they're just, yeah, no, they're but just you can smash the... Lumber backwards. I things. prefer, like, I like big stair runs. Like, if yes. you get... If we if it went to a three or a five floor... Yeah. Mind you, I'm very slow on the way down. Do you guys practice going downstairs? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I don't practice that enough. Because no, you almost need to fall with style. That's, that's yeah. free, free time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. it's um, like the hose makeup. That, that is free time. It's, it's not a fitness. It's pure. Yeah. Do it over and over yeah, and over yeah. again. No it's, free, it's free yeah. time. Rob Budge is electric. Rob Budge oh, is fantastic. Yeah. You stuff. know what? Zach is also very good. down the stairs. Yeah. He's very quick. His tiny little legs can't double step it up, yeah. but <laughs> coming down, he is so fast. And he said, I said to him, you almost need to over index far enough that if you yes. didn't keep moving you would fall down the yes. stairs yes. Yes. you so need to be falling yeah you need to be with with style, with style. yeah like, all right, like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah. otherwise and, and rob always like because on the um 
the British that have got the scaffolding, he always gets like a bruise on his arm because he's genuinely bashing into that bottom one and really? spinning on yeah. it. Yeah, he runs down into it, hits it, and spins. Yeah, he hooks his arm on the. Yeah, yep, I can imagine it's it. an art because yeah. I just no one would really, think. Well, really, really good at that. A lot of people would just think, well, I'll just come down. No, well, like you no, say, if you can perfect that free, and work yeah. on that. But it's I love seeing time. that in events, and we saw like so many changes in leadership as those runs went yeah. on as well. People that are like I said, they're fast on the core haven, slow on the sprint, or anything like that. That's what makes these events so yeah, interesting. Yeah, it is. So who were our who were our big winners from yesterday? Helena took the women's. Let's try and do the age categories if you can remember, because I want to oh. shout out the athletes. If yeah, anyone can remember any, what did you win? I won the. Uh, uh, 45 to 49s. You were the 45 to 49s. Well done. I was surprised, Alan I don't Smith. Like it. Mind you, because <laughs> that's the that's the, the oldest age category. No, no 50, 50 plus. 50 plus. Yeah. We were surprised not to see. Yeah, Alan I was there. surprised. Al, was he close? So I'm not sure. I can't I even know who won, but he wasn't. He didn't take a medal. He usually there. wins 60 pluses, though. That's the thing now. And yeah. 50 to, to he looked 60. in brilliant shape. Though I said to him yeah. yesterday, he looks in very he good really shape. Really is a consummate professional yeah. and that's what's most impressive to that me that is yeah like I said when he came out he's 28 years older than me Jesus Christ and uh, was know. he racing against a young lad because one of his I think uh, yeah, lad watch on his members watch. were saying on his watch, yeah. he, he was giving his lad the younger lad grief because he was like you should absolutely clean the floor me if you don't <laughs> you ash off you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing but, is that there was, it was within about a second I think the young lad fell first then Alan yeah, but how good yeah. is that but the thing yeah. is yeah. The young lad then had a five-second penalty, so Alan then took him actually on the. Did line. he really? Yeah. Oh, How impressive so is that, Alan? Alan Inspirational as well. Like, He's never going to live that Alan's down. Alan's great, and he's such a lovely guy. Isn't he? Yeah. And it was quite enjoyable telling him together as well. Yeah, so no, so I, I, I like that. John went together and told him the bad news, but the good yeah, news at the same so. time. <laughs> who did who did Matt Adams run against? Uh, Simon Calvert. Simon. Sober, but they both fell straight on the start, didn't they? Yeah. When they picked that dummy up, Matt was. Fu- Matt, Matt is still. I'm going to say, Matt, even when you listen that. to this, you will still be fuming about yeah. this. <laughs> he did so well, didn't he? It was so, amazing. Um, He's so good, but it, it, that he said that just threw him because then you've got in your head, am I going to fall again? Yeah. And it took him a while to get up. He's a, he's a it lot fell of, on him, though, A lot of lump it? on that boy, yeah. Yeah, rather than just he fell backwards, it fell on him. And mm. he, he said it, he, he did hurt his back a bit. But luckily not injured, but he felt it when he fell. And I was like, he did well then, because he came back strong. It's more yeah. bruised ego, I think, that is more than the back, bless him. <laughs> Ever heard the quote that true leaders are readers? Well, we believe this is true. Listeners often ask where we go to keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening in the sector globally. So there are a few key publications which I encourage you to go check out. Now, if you're looking for insights on disaster management, fire protection, and firefighting for us, we go to Asia Pacific Fire Magazine. And when you're looking for the latest on the Middle East fire protection industry and fire services, it's Gulf Fire Magazine. And our quarterly check-in is with International Firefighter Magazine, reporting to municipal, industrial, and fire training professionals. Now, next up, I'm widely accepted to be the global voice for passive and active fire protection this is a good one it's international fire protection magazine and finally and perhaps the most relevant to our predominantly uk audience i'd strongly suggest subscribing to uk fire magazine reporting to the united kingdom fire protection industry and fire services we're really excited to announce that after a long-standing relationship and mutual respect we've now partnered with mdm publisher who bring you all of these essential publications because in a world of change the learners shall inherit the earth while the learned shall find themselves perfectly suited for a world that no longer exists Eric Hoffer said that, and I believe he was right. So keep growing, keep learning, and keep yourself in the know and at the cutting edge of what's happening globally by dropping into the notes. And as a gift from the podcast, you can actually subscribe to any of these publications for free using the link in our notes. Now back to the show. So who else do we need to acknowledge before we wrap it up? Because I know I'm conscious on time. Um, um, P. Wakefield, they're right. <laughs> he did amazing yesterday. Non-stop I was really ego. pleased to see him. Yeah. But he has uh, wins a few medals. times about his penalties, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah, such a princess, yeah. honestly. His princessness right. aside, I think he, he, he performed brilliantly. Yeah. Him and James, their race was exceptional to watch. Yeah, James yeah. was, it was outstanding. Yeah. You know what? No, no bullshit above anything else because loads of people will have stuff like this where you have an injury, you have a setback. For me, like prolapse discs in the back, tearing my pec off and then snapping my knee the other year, I'm like, oh, I never want to become that person that's talks about the thing but is a hypocrite and doesn't actually get in there and do it and we all know athletes when you say oh I've got a bit of a dodgy shoulder I've got a bit of a dodgy back and then so and so is doing it with one leg you know or so you know you see some of these athletes doing the the, you know the Invictus games and you're like oh what's my excuse again (laughs) yeah I've got a dodgy ankle do you know what I mean and you're like okay so you might not win but can you just go and be the best version of yourself and that requires so much humility and there's loads of athletes out there 
that have done stuff. We've, we've all had our own setbacks. Sarah's had, had surgeries and things in the last couple of years. We've all had these things that are going on yeah. behind the scenes that no one knows anything about. Um, but people just going up there and doing the best that they can with what they've got. I think that's the most inspiring bit about it. Max, Max Mudge had a great run. Yes. Yesterday. Jesus, she, she was great. She was really good. She's a little dynamite as well. Yeah, isn't she? She's is really powerful. powerful yeah. Because when she matched up, uh, whoever she went again, I was like, oh, this is going to be a really good race. But with due respect to the other athlete, yeah, she sure. was just, she just didn't slow down, no, I think no. is what it was as well. She wasn't like fast off the mark, but she was just consistent. Just consistent, that's what you She was just yeah. absolute all go. So we've got Max, um, obviously we shout out, we've got MSA, the Hikes team were there helping out again. Big shout out to the Lifelines guy. We had some local businesses supporting us. The hotel were great for us again. Who do we need to send any thanks to? Is there anyone we need to shout out? I know we'll forget Moon someone. Moon she won. Moon she won. Oh, yeah. the massage yeah. people. Moon they yeah. was great. Spine, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we said, 100%. yeah, we went oh, in really together, massive. didn't we? Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> blind luck. It was, went yeah. Went in there and went No, them. they was brilliant. And the woman yeah. said to me about it, and she was saying about packages that they do. And I went, are you local? She went, yeah. I went, I live six and a half hours away. So I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> said, but there was, they was brilliant. And having She's them on She's an ex-competitive strongman. She was talking to you about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's why, again, she 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 knew everywhere to go and all the nuts she and crannies. Really, yeah, she was really, yeah. She was really, really good. But, but I think it's a big shout out to the local crews as well. Yeah. yeah like, they, uh, yeah, we had brilliant. Swansea Central and they were brilliant. They yeah. came out down early, set up. That's they nice, came yeah. down throughout the day and supported. Um, then they were back there in the afternoon. Uh, it's great to have yeah. Yeah. Up as well. So, they did an RTC uh, demo. They yeah, the, so, the, so I think it's a big shout out to the local and, crews. Who, yeah, and the cadets, and the, the five cadets. cadets. Yeah. cadets. They put in a good shift, yeah. didn't they? And they, they did brilliant. their own run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so nice to make that time in the middle and for yeah, the, yeah. the crowd to stick around for them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But without the help of these guys, I know we organise it, we stress all, all year about yeah. getting sponsors, you guys in things like that. But these guys have... Without these guys, we couldn't do it either. No. So it's no. a big shout out to the guys who, yeah, they might only give half an hour here and out there, but it it's, it's a big part yeah. of the yeah. club as well. 100%, mate. All of those marginal gains, the 3% here and the 10% there, that's what brings it to this yeah. event at the end of the day. And isn't? the ladies on the... Uh, Registration as well. Yeah, oh, it's brilliant. a thankless task, isn't it? Because Three demos, uh, people go and get registered, yeah. and then they don't say anything to them all day unless they get a penalty. Yeah, and then they want to go home. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go see them? They were great. The cards. So for me, yeah. <clears throat> even the years gone past with the British, I'm like looking for someone, and they're just giving me scraps of paper. I'm like, right, where's this person from? What yeah. service are they? Because they've trained for ages to do this, and I want to give them a good chat. But yeah. you guys got. Great little cars. Yeah, All the race numbers yeah, were ordered. <clears throat> yeah. You know, John, with the greatest respect, John and the British team can learn some stuff from that one. <laughs> Get that run in order nice and seamless. Because otherwise you don't want two minutes between each race no. faffing about because the whole day just stresses. And then the last athletes are going at six, seven o'clock yeah. and you're like, Shit, we need to be done by now. They've had to stand yeah. around all day. Having it so. on that whiteboard was good as well. Because people <clears throat> didn't have to countlessly ask. The, the Emma's about it. It was written on that board, so you could kind of go back and have a kind of yeah. idea of when you're on, which we always want to know, especially if you're later on in the day, yeah. you're thinking, how long have I got, what race is on, there was yeah. putting lines mm. through, the races that had gone. Mm. Yeah, there was very much on top of it. It was brilliant. I wanted to ask about the apparel. So the T-shirts again this year were fantastic. Lovely. T-shirts and the hoodies, yeah. really, really nice. Someone's brother, yeah, we need my to brother. thank for that. Yeah, yeah, JPI. Can, we, can people oh, buy them, people brother? that weren't yeah, here? Yeah, we yeah. spoke to him before briefly, or I've spoke to him briefly. Before. Yeah. That's right, yeah. But yeah, the T-shirts, I, say, I did like the white as well. I, I know it was a bit different, and some people people don't want to go white because it gets mucky easy. But I love them too, yeah. it's it the sweat wicking of it. Yeah. 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 They're, They're so, so, so good. good. Yeah. On green, red and white now, so it's the Welsh flag. No, so. the, the colour is lovely. We'll have to start again. We're back to green next But yeah, the hoodies were lovely, but the t-shirts were fantastic. Yeah, How do people get hold of some more of them, mate? We, we can get orders through if you want. Yeah, if you yeah. get in touch with us, we can. So if, people, if we put a link to the Instagram page or somewhere, yeah, or was, yeah. yeah. Top's a thing on Instagram. Yeah. We'll, people uh, want to order some. I yeah. know most of them probably will have gone yesterday, but there's yeah, a good setup and we, we can get, get some ordered, more yeah. through. Yeah, because no the thing is, I hate, and Sarah and I have gone through loads of this because Sarah's got a great person that does our stuff now. There's nothing worse than getting something because it stands for something, but it's a little bit crap. And then you're like, I'm just not going to wear it. Yeah. It doesn't fit me very well. The material's not very nice. I want to wear it because I support the Welsh, the British, the podcast, whatever. But it doesn't feel yeah, very good. It doesn't wash well yeah. or yeah, yeah, too yeah, weird. Yeah. It's too small and I hate that. Because you'll wear something that's got nothing to do with anything. Some local nobody business. Because you like the hoodie and the hoodie yeah. fits well yeah. and it feels good. Well, yeah. We were talking about that, about the hoodies yesterday with your missus, weren't we? Yeah, oh, my oh. missus wears the, the grey one from the Welsh. <laughs> she wears it all the time. Yeah. All yeah. the bloody time. Because she just likes the cut yeah. of it. Non-stop. Yeah. Yeah. I hope she likes the new colour there as well. Mate. She does. I know you guys saw her out one yesterday. That was the only thing. She didn't ask me how I got on. 
asked me this. No, she's like, just have you got me a new hoodie? Because <laughs> I've worn holes in this one, basically. <laughs> well done, Claire. So, uh, so, yeah, people can order one of them um, from the Instagram page. But, yeah, from well, me I and think, Sarah. I think we're quite lucky, aren't we? We've got a lot of local guys who have helped yeah. us out. So mm. we've got a bloke who does all our website. He's, he's been brilliant for us. Yeah. Michael James Ace, he's, he's in training now. Is he? And uh, oh, he's been fantastic for us. And what he's created... Um, I need to speak to him, and I'm happy to give him some money because we need to do a little bit of work on our website. Oh, so. I tell you what, he is top class, and, yeah. and, and, and nothing's ever too hard. You sing, send him a message, send him an email, year. and it's done. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, when you've got oh, someone with that this? skill set, it's yeah. so useful, isn't it? Because yeah. I always say with any of this, with the greatest respect, you never run out of knuckle dragging firefighters that are willing to come along and do the thing. There's plenty of them. Yeah. But people that can, oh, can you do registration for me? Can you help with the website? Can you embarrass yourself with a microphone for eight hours like Kev or me or something like that? People with, that are happy to do those things that aren't the glorious sprinting, holding a medal thing. So, yeah, big shout out to the website stuff because without that, that's where everybody goes. Yeah. yeah and everyone goes to check it out there. And if that looks rubbish and just a bit slapdash, if yeah. one of us had done it, yeah. then you're like, ah. Uh, and I look at us sometimes, I'm like, ah. Uh, it's a little bit. Uh, it's good. Yeah. But, but it's nice. Like, yeah, he's gone above and be beyond. Like, he's yeah, working he is, with yeah. Will at Stay Strong Collective, and he and the, done the the health and the fitness and the conditioning side of it as well. He, he's getting all of James getting the pictures on there. He's working with the guys mm. getting the sponsors on there. Yeah. He's on all the time, and yeah. people comment, yeah. don't they, regularly? Oh, no, that's that's good. good. The social it's media really is good. good. The, the socials is the big thing, yeah, from the Jameses yeah, that are willing to do that. Yeah. You guys are really active on it and you do the work in the camera and it always looks good. Mm. There's nothing worse than just putting a poorly <laughs> taken photo, yeah. throwing it on there <laughs> with a Welsh flag on it. And you're like, ah, come on. Like, yeah. Once you've done it for long enough with all the stuff that means I have to mess about with constantly, like, you start to get a feel for what good looks like and you're like, yeah, that's not us. Yeah. We're better than that. Let's do something a little bit better. And your guys' stuff looks fantastic. So... I know I'm conscious of time, but just from myself and Sarah and from all the athletes as well, thanks for putting it on again this year. We got away with the weather, that's out of our control and it was beautiful. But oh, didn't you order this weather? I was going to say yeah. thank you. That's yeah. cool. Irrespective of that, it's yeah. always a great event. It's we always love coming down yeah, here. You, you always look after us. Everyone has a positive day and it's been fantastic. So thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Cheers. And we'll see you next year. Yeah, cheers. 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 Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you so much. The Firefighters Podcast was created to recognize, acknowledge, inspire, and hopefully even motivate these incredible individuals who have chosen to be part of the first responder community. Our driving purpose is to create a legacy resource for the current and future generations of firefighters and first responders. We get some incredible feedback from listeners and guests. And as the podcast grows, our desire to create longevity and sustainability means that we are asking for the support of our listeners. If you want to support the podcast, if you want to get discounts to our merchandise, hoodies, clothing, coins, patches, talent, and also access to all of the incredible documents get shared with us from our podcast guests and sector leaders. And please head over to our Patreon page and for just £3 a month, you can support the future of the podcast. Please finally hit that follow, subscribe or rate button on the platform you're listening. And wherever you're in the world, please support your emergency services responders. And thank you for listening.